So I need to do a little rundown before final assembly of my latest project. I call these my SC3s, uh, skinny coaxial three-way. Um, it's <clears throat> utilizing a, a small four-inch coaxial from Dayton Audio, a six-and-a-half-inch woofer. Um, in a split box, the top is sealed off from the bottom uh, for the woofer. It is a ported design. Um, right now I've got a, a, a six inch a port tube in here, which is going to be tweaked and adjusted later. I went with the cedar kind of butcher style block, uh, three quarter inch for the body of the box. It's a lot uh, more lightweight. And I like the fact that, um, it just keeps the, the, the overall poundage of the speaker down, but I wanted to maybe a little more dense wood for the front. So I went with a, a poplar front seems to hold screws a lot better and uh, definitely a, a more heavyweight wood. Um, but enjoyed the, f the final kind of look of the cabinets and, and uh, we'll, um, like I said, do some more tweaking later. The drivers I'm using are both um, Dayton Audio. Uh, this is the model um, CX120 8 ohm coaxial. It has a, I think a, th a three quarter inch tweeter in the center. They actually run it out the back pole piece to a set of a post there. And then a four inch, uh, a mid, mid woofer. Um, and then I'm pairing it with their, uh, DC 160 eight ohm. They call it a six and a half inch woofer. It actually measures closer to like f five and three quarters from surround to surround. So I'm, I'm not sure where they're getting the six and a half inches, but uh, the outside diameter is, is six and a half inches. But my first time trying um, a, a three-way design here and um, these, these woofers seem to be performing quite well. This is my first attempt building uh, a three-way and I've heard people on the feeds talk about that it's definitely more complicated than a two-way. I think it's more than twice as complicated than a two-way. Just adding that extra uh, driver to have to filter in there makes a, a big difference. Each one of these components uh, dramatically affects uh, various things, including keeping an eye on the impedance for these. Um, the woofer extends so high into the mid-range, I had to use a third order on that. So I have a, an 18 dB slope on the, on the woofer with one of the largest caps I ever uh, used in a speaker, uh, 84 uh, microfarad. Uh, the, I've got a separate board for the mid range and tweeter <clears throat> second order on both sides of the, of the mid range. And the tweeter actually rolls off so nice. A, a single cap rolled it off because, uh, um, just, uh, handled it fine. So I got a first order on that. Um, I do have L pads on both. Um, again, the mid range and the tweeter, and I did go with a little higher voltage, uh, wattage, uh, um, resistors on the mid range, just for the fact that they're going to be handling more of the, the frequency response. Um, we'll see if these two 20 watt, um, uh, resistors can actually handle it there. But, uh, overall, like I said, a little more complicated design and we will, we will see how it uh, plays out before I have to do more tweaking. I'll quickly go over a few of the measurements from my SC3 bookshelves um, in DATS. Uh, the overall impedance um, looks pretty good. It, it roughly holds maybe 8 ohms throughout most of the, the bandwidth. A couple little dips here in the mid-range. I had to use an L-pad in there, and it kind of um, knocked that down close to the, the 5 hertz or, or, or 5 ohms. Um, the port tuning ended up at right around 39 hertz. I was shooting for 43 hertz is what was recommended by Basebox Pro um, with a 9 inch length uh, port tube. When I shortened it to about 6 inches, I got it up a little bit closer to the recommended amount for this driver. And so 39 hertz for the, for the, the port tuning. Frequency response and REW um, forget about this dip here. That's something I have in all of my measurements. It's either a uh, a room mode or, or something with a 60 hertz feedback in my system, so ignore that. But overall, got it uh, roughly linear. This dip here around 500 hertz probably is the most noticeable when I was doing my earlier uh, crossover work. 
we're running um, just alligator clips out of the back and in different parts. I actually had this a little shallower. I had it probably two or three dB uh, closer to the 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 80 decibel line. But um, after assembling the crossover, for some reason it it dipped a little lower here. But overall, nice um, linearity for my first attempt at a, a three-way system. The horizontal off axis falls off nice and neatly from zero to 45 degrees. Um, again, a, a great little non-issue for coaxials in the most part. I didn't do the vertical off axis because it should be similar, but the horizontal off axis looks very good. A little peek at the harmonic distortion overall for second, third, and fourth order. Harmonics looks good. The, the brown line down here is our noise floor. Um, and this is the frequency response. And uh, overall, there's good separation. A little bit of rise in the 1 to 200 area on the second harmonic, but overall it looks good. A final little breakdown of my SC3s. Um, the cosmetically, I think they turned out nice using the, the butcher block style cedar for the box with the, the poplar front here, definitely a more dense wood and, and holds, like I said, screws a, a little better. So it holds the drivers in pretty firmly, but, uh, it keeps the overall weight, uh, lighter because of the rest of the box here. Uh, the sealed box, I stuff really full with damp material, uh, trying to kill the back wave totally. So hopefully not a lot of, of cabinet residents going on in there and lightly stuff the bottom here, just keeping everything away from the port, uh, base frequencies ended up dipping a little more than planned. Um, I got the tuning around 39 Hertz where base box pro was recommended about, uh, 43 Hertz for this driver. I haven't noticed too much bottom and out, but, um, I'll keep, um, testing and, and, and checking that out. The grills turned out pretty nice. The magnetic grills, a uh, quarter inch, uh, just particle board. Uh, and I did radius the inside edges uh, around the coaxial to knock down diffraction. And according to measurements, it seems to have done a, a decent job, but uh, really pleased with the, the results um, plant this get, kind of gets me on my way to plans of making a, a three-way tower with separate drivers, not a coaxial this time, and uh, some nicer quality um, or uh, nicer um, um, driver choices. Um, some from Morel and and, and SB Acoustics uh, for some um, mid-range and tweeters, and uh, I'm going to step up to maybe a, a tower size speaker here soon, but. Overall pleased, and, and these are, are playing quite nice.